The anti-racists come for Herschel Walker. What the Democrats will sacrifice in the name of winning. Quote, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. Martin Luther King, Jr. It turns out that the anti-racists never meant a single word of any of it. They were trying to preserve their status. That Herschel Walker is a black man raised in the same systemically racist country as George Floyd doesn't cross their minds, or if it did, they would quickly suppress it. It turns out it was never about systemic racism or oppression at all. It was about ideological compliance. How do these good white liberals justify these attacks? Perhaps it has to do with how the entire left rationalizes their attacks against black dissidents. They see them as anti-black or Uncle Tom's. The last thing they will give them is their freedom to decide for themselves what they believe. You'd think, given that Clarence Thomas is the longest serving justice on the court, the left or the Democrats would owe him some respect. Instead, they've been trying to find ways to remove him from the court have gone after his wife and trash him with abandon on social media. It's okay for their great white hope, Joe Biden, to fly into California and call Larry Elder, a successful and promising black conservative, a Trump clone, just to save Gavin Newsom from recall. It's about policy, not race, they will say, with a straight face. But also, Larry Elder was called a white supremacist in blackface by the Los Angeles Times, so Biden could do or say whatever he wanted. I watched the anti-racists indulge in attacks on Elder to spare King Gavin from defeat, a bacchanalia of hate aimed at the one black man they were allowed to attack and not be called a racist online. Because Elder lived a decent life, they couldn't drag out any skeletons from his closet, but they destroyed him all the same. The anti-racists protect you, but only if you are ideologically compliant and you never threaten their power. Herschel Walker has three strikes against him off the bat, He's a longtime friend of Donald Trump, ideologically non-compliant, and had become a threat to their power. Running for the Senate in Georgia up against Senator Raphael Warnock, it was one thing for him to run at all, endorsed by Trump, but it was another thing to come within striking distance of a win. For podcast listeners, we're looking at a tweet from Stephen King that says, Evangelicals who continue to support the hypocrite and liar Herschel Walker are putting politics ahead of godliness. Guys and gals, you know better. None of the protections other black men are afforded, especially George Floyd, whose entire life was forgiven once he became a religious symbol, apply to Herschel Walker. No one knows what George Floyd believed or whether he supported any politician or issue. They would never ask. Asking would be considered racist. The only thing that matters is that he was a victim of an oppressive system that, according to them, was killing and incarcerating black men at an alarming rate. Had Walker been caught shooting someone in the back of the head at a convenience store, carjacking an old man, or beating an Asian woman to death, his crimes would be quietly ignored by the media and politicians. They would bow their heads in fear and sadness that so much of what built this country brought us to this terrible place, and if they think of them at all, they feel shame. So it's a little surprising that they would open the floodgates and unleash hell on a guy who came from humble beginnings in Georgia to really make something of himself. You might not know much about Herschel Walker except what you see caterwauling all day long on Twitter, late night comedy, and in the media. For podcast listeners, we're looking at a little montage of media stories. SNL takes on Chris Pratt as Mario, Herschel Walker, Kanye West. SNL roasts Herschel Walker for raising money instead of his kids. And another tweet by Tony Blue Wave that says, Evangelicals, rules for thee and not for me, do not vote Republican. They say, do as I say, not as I do. MAGA Republicans are paying for abortions, Herschel Walker. Getting divorced, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and having extramarital affairs, too many to list. 
And another tweet by Chet Y that says, Best Women's March DC sign. Do we have to be Herschel Walker's girlfriend to get an abortion? Ha 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 so funny. And by Shannon Watts, if Herschel Walker were a woman who had an abortion, he would have lost the support of the Republican Party and voters. But because he's a man, he can abet an infinite number of abortions and still win a seat in the U.S. Senate, where he'll strip women of their reproductive rights. And then probably the worst of them all by Mr. Jeremy Newberger, who really thinks a lot of himself. Uh, it says, by the way, this meme is going around. I did say this 100% true, bragging about it. And it says, if Republicans are willing to put a violent, lying, deadbeat dad who is as dumb as a stump and incoherent as a wet newspaper in the upper chamber of the effing United States Congress for six long years for partisan gain, they don't give two Fs about our country. <laughs> It's probably not a coincidence that the story broke at the same outlet that employs Rick Wilson, a notorious shark in dirty politics, and a founder of the Lincoln Project. I can't prove it, and no one asked, but the Daily Beast has covered the story nonstop. Here are some Daily Beast headlines. Herschel Walker's wife reached out to his abortion accuser. She had an abortion with Herschel Walker. Pro-life Herschel Walker paid for girlfriend's abortion. Herschel Walker's latest abortion denial still makes no sense. A fascinating detail in the Herschel Walker saga. Herschel Walker's campaign knows he's a liar and they... Daily Show unloads on GOP's baffling defense of Herschel Walker. Like Trump, Walker is not a seasoned politician. Taking on the jackals in the press and blowhards like James Carville and Rick Wilson wouldn't be easy for anyone, let alone an athlete. But what I like about Walker is his authenticity. It comes through in interviews, and I always think, I like that guy. It's not surprising that he would reimburse his girlfriend for an abortion. That's what nice guys do in the land of pro-choice. And every hypocritical Democrat on Twitter knows that. That he rose in a country the left calls systemically racist to become a football champion and Heisman winner should be remarkable and impressive by any measure. But you probably didn't know this about Walker. Quote, since being diagnosed with Disassociative Identity Disorder, DID, as a result of trauma he experienced in childhood, Herschel has dedicated his life to helping others struggle with mental health, end quote. No doubt the never-Trumpers like Peggy Noonan and David French are surfing this wave in hopes of yet again purging Trumpism from their party. They clutch pearls, they stand in judgment, they are taken aback, horrified, just as they were with Trump. But American democracy is not a race for man of the year. All that matters is whether or not he can adequately represent the needs of Georgia voters. They are voting for America first, and that is something they know Walker will fight for. And yes, Walker's son has been loudly criticizing him for not being a good family man, to put it mildly. But that's just one story about Walker that is amplified in the media again and again to convince people he is a bad person. The problem is, he isn't. He made mistakes, a lot of them but he's trying to remake his life and work for the American people. And look at the attack machine holding him back, the anti-racists. They should be ashamed of themselves. The woman being used by the Daily Beast to drop this October surprise is clearly in Walker's corner. Breitbart broke the story that the same woman being used by the Democrats to smear Walker, probably at a price, exchanged supportive texts with Walker's wife about his Senate run. For podcast listeners, we're looking at a text that says from Herschel's wife, thank you, Herschel really loves our country, and she says, he'll do great, and you will keep him focused, proud of you guys, wishing you nothing but the best for you tonight, and she says, thank you, and she says, congratulations. As with everything involving the Democrats of late, you never really know whether they mean what they say or it's just another election they have to win. One day they call Trump supporters extremists and a threat to the Republic. The next day they're spending 70 million helping to elect those same MAGA candidates and pretend they care about democracy. Spent a billion dollars to put Joe Biden in power and pretend to care about dark money and Citizens United. They can spend decades denying the results of elections while repeating the phrase election deniers again and again. Lest we forget the famous Kurt Vonnegut quote that exemplifies the post-2000 Democrats. The only difference between Hitler and Bush is that Hitler was elected. 
They can protest their government as loudly and violently as they want, but turn around and condemn political violence. They can call the nation's police force systemically racist in the summer of 2020, not just ignore the abuse they suffered, but encourage more of it, then turn around and pretend like they cared about the cops after January 6th. They can do whatever they want with no objective media to call them out. To those of us who believed in the Democrats once upon a time, watching this blatant hypocrisy play out is depressing. I thought we were the side that did not go low. I thought we were the side that valued due process and freedom of expression. And yes, I thought we were the side that would not destroy the life of a black man just to scrabble for a tiny bit more power. The Democrats are fuming over Roe v. Wade, so they channel their outrage squarely at Walker. They don't want to lose Georgia, but they're also mad that voters in various states now get to decide on whether abortion should be legal or not. Walker is pro-life without restrictions. That means war, anti-racism, or not. But to me, they have betrayed the very foundation of their entire platform in their selective attacks on black men on the rise. I find it hypocritical at best, shameful at worst. I noticed it a long time ago, and I'm getting used to the feeling of disillusionment. As a lifelong Democrat, I spent a lot of time and energy defending both Bill and Hillary Clinton. We had seen what happened to Gary Hart oh so long ago, a sex scandal that destroyed a political career. We were all willing to disregard and look away after Bill Clinton's many accusers came forward, because by then we knew to win we had to excuse what we called a character issue. These same Democrats, these good white liberals, these anti-racists, all defended him and Hillary Clinton. Joe Biden is just one about face after another on nearly every issue. They keep him there, flawed though he may be, because he is useful to them. They should worry that they are pinning their entire identity on purity and moral superiority. They might one day find themselves back where they were in the 90s, sacrificing character for a guy who can win and push the policies they want. In the film Primary Colors, the character of Libby, Kathy Bates, confronts the Stantons, Emma Thompson and John Travolta as the Clintons, on their willingness to play dirty and ruin a man's life. She says that once upon a time, they believed they could win on ideas and didn't have to resort to dirty politics. This one, he takes me out. We go to this little open air Cuban joint. Remember Jack? I got my head in my hands. I mean, life has ended. And I say, they did it, the CIA. It had to be the CIA. I couldn't believe that Tom Eagleton would really be a nutcase. They had to have dragged him off and drugged him and made him crazy. It couldn't have been that McGovern was just a complete amateur. No, they did dirty tricks. And I said to Jack, we got to get the same capability as the CIA. Remember, Jack? We got to be able to do dirt, too. And you said, no. Our job is to end all that. Our job is to make it clean, because if it's clean, we win, because our ideas are better. You remember that, Jack? That was a long time ago. Libby, you said it yourself. We were young. We didn't know how the world worked. Now we know. We know that if we don't move on this picker situation, two things will happen. The first is we're dead. Everything we've worked for since Miami 25 years ago dies and fast. The second thing that happens is someday very soon when the romance dies, when they've gotten sick of Freddie Picker's quiet, righteous act, when they want to pull his wings off, some enterprising journalist will stumble onto this. And if he doesn't, the Republicans will lead him to it on their timetable next. Well, it'll be another Eagleton, only it'll be our fault this time. For letting it happen. Your fault, Libby. Honey, you may be right. All of it may be right. But we can't do it because it just ain't who we're supposed to be. Maybe we could leak part of it, the, the clear water stuff. We know the Republicans have that. Of course, Jack, you don't think they're going to have the rest any day. Now, you'd, you think Grace is only going to tell this story once. I'm sorry, Libby, there's just no discussion. You're right. None. Henry and me have already decided this dies here. I don't think so. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but it does. And here's why. You know what this is? Test results on Jack's blood. 
Uncle Charlie's blood taken over the years. And this, this is the blood test report Jack gave me that proves he's not the father of Loretta McAllister's baby. And you know what, Jack? It's not your blood. Isn't that a riot? The blood sample Dr. Beauregard took was not from you. It was from Uncle Charlie. You sent him to have his blood tested in your place because you know good old Dr. Beauregard loves you, wants to teach those Yankees a lesson. Well, he's not gonna love you enough to lose his license, Jack. Once he knows I have proof, he'll fold like a cheap accordion. I know that won't prove you are the father of Loretta's baby. In fact, I think you're not. But it proves you thought you might be. And that proves you f***ed her. And that will kill your chances. You would do that. You would end his political career. You see, Jack, she hadn't even heard. She isn't even upset that you f***ed your 17-year-old babysitter. And you know why? It's never the cheat who goes to hell. It's always the one who he cheated on. That's why you can still talk in that tender-hearted voice about being in it for the folks. And Susie here can only talk in that voice from hell about your political career. Now, what kind of shit is that, Jack? Oh, excuse me, I forgot. It's the same old shit. It's the shit no one ever calls you on, ever. Because you're so completely special. Because everyone was always so proud of you. Me too. Me the worst. It just makes it a whole lot easier for me. I mean, it's t totally depressing. What have I been doing this for my whole pathetic wife? So here's the deal. If you move on Freddie Picker, who I think we all agree is a flawed but decent man, I move on you. Yes. I will destroy this village in order to save it. At the end of the film, Libby realizes her entire life spent supporting the Stantons has been a waste. They aren't special or different. They aren't good. They aren't even honorable. They only care about winning. And so she blows her brains out. The nonstop attacks on Walker might stick, who knows? But it's also possible that voters in Georgia will take Donald Trump's word on Walker, a guy he's known for decades over a group of people who have treated them like human garbage for six years. I don't expect any of this to get any better in the lead up to the midterms. Very rich, very powerful people do not like having things taken away from them. If they're willing to lift the ban on criticizing imperfect black men for this election, you can imagine how bad it's going to get if they lose the Senate. But the pendulum is swinging away from the Democrats. They might eke out a few wins here or there, but they've become too radical, too unhinged, and too authoritarian. They lurch from one outrage to the next, dragged along by Twitter hysteria. They have lost touch with the American people, and it is becoming more and more obvious by the day that they need to be taken out of power. They also need to be taught a lesson that their media attack machine has become more of a liability. It must exhaust itself so that they can go back to reporting the news to the American people, not just their preferred side. Herschel Walker has now gotten a taste of what it feels like to be attacked by the machine. No doubt his friend Donald Trump is helping him navigate the storm. The Democrats have always been at a disadvantage when it comes to Trump because they're fighting a version they created not the one that actually exists. That also seems to be the case with Herschel Walker, whose best offense is simply taking it to the people. Oh, God is good. Now, don't get me wrong, this matches the suit. You know, I was born about two and a half hours from here knowing that I was colored. I went to college about an hour and a half from here knowing that I was black. I have a home here in Atlanta knowing that I'm African-American. But time has changed, and now I'm proud to be an American. I, I played football in the 80s in New York City, and I met a young man that I thought was very brass. But uh, I learned that he loved his family. He loved this country and he loved people. So I remember telling a reporter from the New York, New York Times, 
that this guy could be president of the United States in 1985 because he loved America. But I guarantee you can't find that in the archives today. But I've always known that uh, he's different because he became the 45th president of the United States of America. As Sun Tzu writes in The Art of War, quote, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle, end quote. The best thing for the Democrats would have been to lose in 2020. That would have given them the wake-up call they need to find new candidates and a new direction. They have no choice now but to double down on their own failed policies, trash their opponents with their powerful media machine, and hope for the best. But yes, we will all have to destroy this village in order to save it. Thank you for listening to my Substack, Sasha Stone. Dot substack.com. And remember, to thine own self be true.